All right, this is the help video for Anthropology Reading 8, Digging Up the Past. <clears throat> so far in this unit on, on anthropology, we have studied the ways anthropologists think about cultures and people. We have seen that anthropologists use the pieces of evidence about a culture, culture traits to put together the puzzle of how people live in a culture. You may be wondering how the anthropologist gets this evidence and where this information is gotten. One way of getting evidence is to live in a culture for a while. Anthropologists call this living or working in the field. The anthropologist eats, works, sleeps, and plays with the people she or he is visiting and studying. So if you're to go to China, learn their language, um, live as they do, eat the kind of food that they do, that would be living in the field. By becoming an accepted member of the society, an anthropologist can find out firsthand what it is like in that culture. Since an anthropologist has not grown up in the culture, he or she can never completely understand it. What if it isn't possible to live in the field? What if the culture is no longer in existence? Anthropologists then have to rely on the writings of other anthropologists, or they can try to find clues themselves. One way of finding clues about past cultures is through archaeology. Archaeology is the branch of anthropology in which the remains or artifacts of past cultures are studied. So again, archaeology is a branch of anthropology. Anthropology is not a branch of archaeology. Archaeologists dig up the past, uncovering cultures which have been covered through the years with dirt, water, and sand. The place where they choose to dig is referred to as a site. So again, a site is where they choose to dig. As cultures die, they are often replaced by other newer cultures, which are built right over the older ones. In the past, when a city was destroyed by fire or flood or some other disaster, the people who survived would leave. Years later, sometimes even centuries later, people would return. They would level the remains of the earlier culture and build new homes and buildings. Today, archaeologists find layers upon layers of ancient cultures. The culture found that each layer or stratum is older than the one just uncovered. So in other words, a layer is a stratum, or a stratum is a layer of a culture that's been buried. The deeper the digging goes, the older the cultures that are that are revealed. The artifacts found that each stratum tell the archaeologists about life in a culture at a particular time. Sometimes as many as 20 different strata have been uncovered. So that's layers. Showing life at 20 different times in history the archaeologist has to be very careful when digging up the precious remains of bygone cultures. One powerful thrust of the shovel could shatter and completely destroy a key artifact, running years of investigation by ar other archaeologists and anthropologists. What is even worse, such an accident could ruin the chances of others who are just starting their work on that culture. Although they might mean no harm, many an amateur anthropologists and, and archaeologists have destroyed artifacts by being careless about their work. The destruction of artifacts has become such a problem that the government of the United States has passed laws against unauthorized people disturbing archaeological sites. Once at the site, the archaeologist excavates or digs to uncover the remains of one culture. So this word excavate and dig mean the same thing. Before the archaeologist begins what is called the dig, he or she must first make a map of the site. When the archaeologist divides the site into squares, this is called making a grid system. So dividing the site into squares is called a grid system. Making a map in a grid system is necessary for the archaeologist to keep track of exactly where all artifacts are found. The location of artifacts and other evidence may mean as much as the way they were made. Bones of people who lived long ago are important and useful to study. They tell us about the physical features of people in those past times. If the, bones, <clears throat> if the bones of many people are found in one place, we know more. The people in those times may have lived together in a society. If the bones of a large animal are found in the same place with human bones and arrowheads, we might guess that the people were killed by the animal. Another guess would be that the animal was slain by the survivors of the hunting party. Or maybe the people killed each other over the right to keep the animal for food and clothes. At any rate, it is important to know exactly where each artifact and bone is found. After making a map and a grid system, the archaeologist is ready to start excavating or digging. 
excavation is almost always done by a team of archaeologists. The work is long and hard and usually lasts several years at each site. As they dig down, the archaeologists mark each level with a metal disc, which has a number on it. When new maps are made, those numbers are used for identifying areas. Each stratum is dug out very carefully so nothing is broken. When an artifact is found, it is removed and the dirt slowly taken off. It is then numbered and put away until later. As artifacts and bones are collected, the archaeologist tries to figure out how old they are. Science has ways of determining the age of the artifact. By using various techniques, anthropologists can put together the piece of the cultural puzzle. They hope to answer many questions about the culture. How long ago did these people live? What did they do? How do they keep alive? There are, a million, there are a million questions anthropologists and archaeologists ask about life hundreds or thousands of years ago. Discoveries in the future may provide the answers. Okay, let's define these words. First one is stratum, and that is a layer of a culture that has been buried in the past. Dig is the same as excavation. That means... Um, to unearth things from the ground, so dig things up. Grid system is to make a map of squares at the place where you're doing a dig, and a site is the location where you're doing a dig. Why is it important to dig art artifacts out of the ground slowly and carefully? Because you might break them, and we would lose all of that valuable information. Okay, you should also watch the two videos uh, that I've set up, and pay attention to some of the years and the things that he's um, washing off with water and figure out what those things are. That's it for today.